Hello, welcome back to Real Marriage. Yes, today we're going to be talking to the single people and a lot of single people ask us questions and want to know when we're going to do something uh, to address them. So tonight we decided to um, use this time to discuss some of the things that we did while we were waiting on our mates. So, you know, I think a lot of people, um, before they get married, they don't ask for God's wisdom. And that was like a must for me because I was afraid of, you know, getting married is a big deal. And if you're talking about and for life, you want to make sure you have the right person. You want to make sure you have the best that God has for you. So, and the best way to do that is the way we did it. We just prayed and asked God to bring our mate. And um, even even to the point where when we met each other, um, with all the signs pointing towards this is the right person for me, and I was the right person for him, we still kept praying it through over and over and over all the way to the end. You remember when we had all of our wedding dates set up and... Uh, he was so sure that that we were meant to be, and I was still so hesitant and nervous. So he would set a wedding date up, and then uh, I would get Kofi, and then we I would cancel that wedding date. And then <laughs> I he set another wedding date, or, or I would set the wedding, next wedding date, and then I would get Kofi to get. <laughs> so finally, by the third time, you know, I kept praying about it and praying about it. He knew that we were meant to be. But I was still struggling with it, and I wanted to make sure that there was no regrets, no mistakes. So I would just, I remember just praying and praying, and, you know, I can't say that I heard a big voice from the hills or a burning bush or anything like that, but I do remember such a peace of God that came upon my heart, and then I knew that this was the right person for me. Um, because I was afraid of, of making a mistake. And, you know, God honors that when you're afraid of making a mistake because you really want to do uh, the right thing by him, then he'll honor that and he'll answer your prayer and let you know. But the main thing is, uh, don't you think the main thing is just to be wait on the Lord? Yeah. Just to wait. Definitely. To wait on the Lord. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. The reason I was so for sure was because I made a list. And my list was... Um, she had to love God, um, she had to love me, and she had to love my boys, and she had to um, uh, be strong because I had a son that was that needed a strong mom. And so before I made my list, the Lord showed me in a back tutu. It says, write the vision down, and make it plain. So I did. I wrote my vision down. And I waited. And I said, God, this is what I want in my wife. So then the next step, I was, um, you know, looking and checking. And, and I'd always hear the Lord say, no, no, not that one. No, not that one. And then I got to the point where I was like, God, I really want to make, I really want my wife. I just kind of heard the Holy Spirit say to me, you know, you just have to wait. And I want you to not be so consumed with that. And I just got to the point where I was okay. If I didn't get my mate right then, I was all right. And then all of a sudden, my wife showed up. Yeah, I think, you know, when we, when I was waiting, it was, I just wanted the best that God had for me. And, you know, you don't want to be desperate to get someone because if you do you're going to make a mistake and you might have a honeymoon for a little while but it will soon wear off but once you get the mate that god has for you the honeymoon does not wear off you know you can keep that fire lit and it's no regrets you know we talk to people all the time who uh rushed into something or marry the person that they they weren't sure was uh, the right person for them and then we have to do a lot of work to try to get them in a place where they can get along and, and live happy. So it's it's good to, to marry the right person because then you can just start building from there instead of uh, trying to tear down old walls and wounds and, and then start building. You know, sometimes that takes years. So it's yeah. it's just nice to be able to, to marry the person that God has for you and just be able to take off from there. Yeah. So I remember reading 
the Bible, it says Mark 10, 9. It says, what, what God has put together, let no man break apart. And that's the key right there. If God joins you together, let no man break you apart. So if he joins you together, he will lead you and guide you and direct you. And everything in marriage, even down to the most smallest thing in your marriage, mm -hmm. he so cares about. Mm -hmm. But the key is to make sure that this is the right person for right. you. You have to be able to hear his voice. And if he gives you a yes, that's the spouse, then you go with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a reason why we call our show Real Marriage. Because we want people to know real stories, real scenarios, and real mercies and grace of God. Yeah. And we, um, 28 years ago, I was married before I met my husband. And uh, it was um, a, a lot of lessons to be learned there. And I found out that it's not worth, um, you know, marrying someone that God doesn't really have for you. And the things that I learned was through a lot of hurts and a lot of pains. And so we want to share um, what we had to go through and endure to, to get to this place in hopes that you won't have to go through those so, things. We don't so. want to paint a picture that what we have uh, has always been this perfect union uh, because we've learned a lot along the way. And uh, you know, 28 years ago when I was married to my first husband, um, it was very hard, and um, I found out that it's it's a whole lot easier, and life is a whole lot sweeter when you're married to the person that God has ordained for you to be married to. And so it, our hope is that through our experiences and our pains and our hurts and our failures that you won't have to endure some of those things. Paying attention to the warning signs when you first meet your mate is extremely important. A lot of couples uh, ignore some of those things, and then when they resurface, uh, then there's a lot of work to try to go back and correct those things. Uh, sometimes those warning signs are large enough that you need to turn and run the other way. And we just want to talk about some of those things that you shouldn't ignore or think that they're going to go away. So in 2 Corinthians 6.14, it says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? <clears throat> Being equally yoked is a, is a great blessing to um, having unity with each other. And being equally yoked is, is important that you're equally yoked in the Lord. That you both love the Lord first and foremost. So if you have a mate and you say you're a Christian... You need to have a mate that also is a Christian, and it's not just saying it, but it's actually walking it out and living it before you. So take your time and watch to see how they respond. Watch to see, the look for the fruits, because the scripture says that you would know them by their fruits. So if you don't see fruits, there's probably something that's not being revealed to you. When you're in love with an unequally yoked person, they can pull you away from God. And if that happens, that's a bad place to be. And if you're equally yoked, that love can help you pull you two together and help you to chase yeah. after God together. Oh, yeah. um, we just encourage you to seek after somebody who's equally yoked as you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you uh, are yoked with someone who loves the Lord, then it's going to um, increase your relationship with God. And you together will walk in the destiny that God has ordained for you to walk in. Uh, it would be a terrible thing to, to miss the call that God has on your life because you're with someone who is the head of your house um, as, a, as a wife. Um, if it's a husband and he's the head of the house and, and he's not living for the Lord, um, he could take you in a direction that you really don't want to be in or go in and also the direction that God didn't ordain for you to go in. So it's important because you only have one life to live. And the worst thing you could do is to um, 
allow yourself to end up in a relationship that's not ordained of the Holy Spirit. When you're unequally yoked before you get married and then you get married um, and then you have children, your children are affected by that too. Your children could walk away from God because their dad or mom is not living for God and they'll pull them away from them. So it's very, very, very important to be equally yoked. Mm -hmm. And you know, the enemy is after you, your family, and the next generations. And if he can get a child mixed up in that, then it's a good chance that he can get that child to not live for the Lord. Yeah. Because it's, it's just sad to see. I mean, we've counseled quite a few people that um, were unequally yoked. And you know, we just encourage you to seek after somebody with like faith, like mind. Mm -hmm. And always pray. Be willing to pray and ask the Lord to, to reveal to you um, if the, the person you're with is the person that God has ordained for you to be with. Um, I think we shared how many times we we set a date and then change a date and set a date because um, we really, really want it the best and we want it to live in peace. Um, there's nothing like living in your home with peace and unity. And, you know, you would, the couples that we work with, they would tell you, even with some of them having uh, a lot of wealth, uh, earthly wealth, they would tell you in a heartbeat that they would love to have peace and unity in their home rather than a bunch of money and riches. So you just can't put a dollar amount on it. And it's a beautiful thing to be able to walk in your door and have the peace of God in your home and have unity where a place where you can just come and be at peace. So it's so. not worth sacrificing um, the peace that God has for you and his plan and purpose for your life. Um, just for a, a cheap thrill. You know, the other thing too, I, I want to go back to the children because that's so vital. And, um, you know, when, when you when you find the right spouse and you know God's, um, his blessing is on it. Um, when you get married and you have your children. Um, I mean, it's amazing how we look at our children and the blessings that come because we did it the right way. We we sought God and we, we trusted God to bring us our mate and he brought my wife and you know he brought me he brought to my, my wife. <laughs> so I you know and, and then you just look at our children and see how blessed they are and see how successful they are and see how they know how to get a hold of God for themselves and they're seeking after God and you don't have to worry about praying that they get saved you pray that they help them to make the right decisions mm -hmm. and that's just a beautiful thing yeah it, it is and also you know when you give your children that that faith in god and that confidence that they can go to god for themselves um you know you, you don't think about it before you have children or when your babies are little uh, but at some point that's going to be on your heart if you didn't give them that opportunity to see mom and dad walk out their faith. And uh, because kids learn through um, experience and watching and observing their parents. And if, the, <clears throat> if your children can see mom and dad unified and working together, they're going to want that. Yeah. And they're going to look for that and expect that because that will be the norm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the other thing that's sad when we speak with couples is those that are trying to make a relationship work that they know in their heart is not the right thing for them. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to encourage you to don't waste your time being locked in with someone who you know is not the person that God has for you because you're wasting time and the right person is somewhere. God cannot release that person to you, to you because you're not in the place to receive them. That's right. So if, if you're willing to let go of the one you think you love, then God will bring that one that he really has for you that you really will love. And I think that's a, that's a very vital thing. Mm -hmm. So if you are with someone who uh, does not really want to live for the Lord and that maybe they're, they're very sneaky or maybe they're 
uh, hiding things all the time, uh, those are red flags and you need to listen to those and stop and slow down and, yep. and go back to praying about this. Yep. Um, you know, if, if it's someone who maybe has a very short fuse, uh, maybe there's some abuse tendencies, you, you have to not ignore those things. I mean, we, we talk to women and men all the time who say things like, um, th- they promised me that they would never do this again, or they promised me that it won't happen. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I just want to say if you're a young lady that's being physically or verbally abused, and you think this is the only man that you could ever be around, I would tell you to separate and pray about it and ask God, is this really for me? Mm -hmm. Because Because when you're in those kind of relationships, God can't really speak to you because you're so emotionally wrapped in. Yeah. That you can't even hear. So you have to separate yourself. Um, If that person is meant for you and you separate yourself long enough to hear from the Holy spirit, guess what? They'll still be there. And if it's not God, don't worry. They won't be there and it will be okay. You will yeah. be okay. Yeah. I always say, listen to your heart because uh, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and um, and reveal some things to you. So always be willing to be honest with the Holy Spirit and hear exactly what, what He has and what He wants you to know so that you can make good choices that will last uh, for a lifetime of blessings. God has something great in store for your marriage. Partner with us today, your number one best-selling authors, Chris and Angie Yalzi. We wanted you to hear some of the awesome testimonies from some of the couples that we have coached. Stay tuned for the rest of the show right after. We just wanted to encourage you and invite you to one of the most awesome decisions that you will ever make. And that is being coached by Chris and Angie Yalzi. I had no idea how anointed and how caring and how sensitive and how compassionate and how patient they were. It was all on my wife. Sometimes you just need somebody to actually walk you through and give you accountability and help you through it yeah. and get you there. And they're just, they're so encouraging. Like I literally talked to Angie one night and got off the phone and texted my husband and was like, I've never felt so much hope in all my life. I will tell you that um, it has been a wonderful experience for us. We both really appreciate the wisdom and insight that they both have and specifically um, their love for the Lord and their love for us as a couple has really shown through. Uh, they really put a lot of effort into hearing from God and not just going off of a script. Our answer. So I didn't I want say. traditional therapy, even though I'm a therapist myself, I didn't want the traditional therapy. I didn't want somebody to speak at me with practicalities. I wanted real deep healing and I feel like we've gotten that. And I can honestly, honestly say, I don't know where we would be if we didn't come here and meet with them. We want to invite you to our real marriage conference, November 2nd in Columbus, Ohio. Don't delay register today. So while you were waiting on me, what, what were you doing or thinking? I know what I was thinking, but I want to know what you were thinking, and I know they want to know what you were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I learned from past relationships that um, I didn't want to go through that ever again. So I wanted to do it right this time. And so I totally trusted God in everything I did. Mm-hmm. And everything, you know, just listen for His voice. Uh, when He'd show me relationships, I would watch him and study him. Um, I just, I just had such a strong desire that I did not want to go through another failed relationship. Mm-hmm. And he really taught a lot mm-hmm. just by watching, reading books, um, you know, watching shows. Uh, it, it was, it was just, just a lot of learning before you came. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, that's exactly what happened with me as well. I, I always um, would watch every marital show and read every book I could get my hands on uh, because I knew how the kind of wife I wanted to be. You know, a lot of people watch a love story and they want that, but then they don't do what it takes to get that. So um, I wanted to be a good wife and I wanted to have a good husband and I wanted the romance and the love and all the stuff that people get married for. So, um, 
you know, God was preparing my heart for you and as you, as he was preparing your heart for me so that we could have what we have. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to, to pray and try to work on yourself because that is, you want to come uh, as whole and close to God as possible so that, you know, the Lord can then melt your hearts together and, and create one unified loving relationship. So, uh, you know, that is what, that was a requirement is that I had to know what God had for me first before I could try to come into a relationship and, you know, all the whole, the broken dreams and bad relationships and things that I went through in the past. I, I didn't want to carry that into our, our relationship. So I remember saying, you know, God, I want to make sure I am rid of all these emotions and all these, yep. um, you know, bad experiences in my mind and, and all of the insecurities that came along with it. I wanted to be rid of all that because I didn't want to take that into our relationship. So uh, that's what I think that's what makes it successful. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I was asked the question one time um, at a women's conference. Uh, a woman posed a question that what should she do if um, she's not real sure, but she's getting a lot of pressure from uh, her boyfriend slash fiance about getting married. Um, what would you say to that person? I would say you have to have a peace about it. And, um, and if you're getting pushed, then that don't really doesn't sound like uh, a lot of peace. And, you know, I would say just you need to pray, ask God to help you uh, make that right decision. Mm -hmm. And if and if and if your you know fiance or boyfriend or whatever um, is pushing you like that and he doesn't honor your wish, then that's a that's a that's a, a red flag for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was exactly my advice. Was that. Um, you need to wait until you know that yeah. that the Lord is has blessed this and has you know wanted this union to happen. Then you need to wait until you hear from Him. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said earlier, we had uh, three different wedding dates, and I wanted the peace of God. Until I had the peace of God, I was not going to do it. So uh, you always wait on the Lord, and He will definitely direct your steps. Yeah. You know, one of the things that when we were looking for a mate. Uh, I know I had these preconceived ideas of what and who God was going to have for me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you just don't know. And because God wants to use everything to glorify him. And I didn't know that my mate was going to be a Caucasian man. <laughs> but, you know, that's what God gave me. And, uh, and I don't regret it at all. But you don't want to put God in a box and just assume that your mate is going to look like a certain color or, you know, whatever, or come from a certain place in the world. But, you know, I just was open to whatever God had for me. And uh, he told me when before I even met him, part of the, the prophetic word that was given to me was not to look, not to date. But when I met my mate, I would know him. And um, I didn't know that, you know, when I met him, uh, he, God just, just did it. It was such a, you know, impossible connection that it had to be, and only could be God. And uh, the first thing I thought was, wow, he's, he's white, you know, <laughs> and I was kind of looking at him up and down, but it's okay. You know, God knew what he was doing and, uh, I just love him and I don't care what color he is and he doesn't care what color I am. So be open to whatever it is that God has for you because, uh, you you want to look at the heart and not the outward flesh color. <laughs> what do you think of that? That's good. Okay. Okay. You know, I know that the Lord has uh, a plan for all of our lives, and He wants us to to glorify Him on this earth. And uh, the best and most beautiful way to glorify God on this earth is when a husband and wife is in unity with Him and displaying what uh, a marriage should look like. And uh, I had a little post on our, on our Facebook page that um, it's, it's God's gift to give you a marriage, but your gift back to God is to glorify Him in that marriage. So um, that's what God wants for you. And 
we're just going to pray before we end this, this broadcast and we're going to pray that the Lord will meet your needs to give you the, the desires of your heart yeah. and that uh, you will definitely have the mate that he has for you because that makes a beautiful life and no regrets and you can flourish and become all God has for you without any delays uh, and that's what you really want so we're going to just pray before we end the, the program and and God will honor that as long as you're willing to listen and and uh, be obedient to his leading uh, he'll honor that yeah yeah so if I could tell you one thing tonight um, God has a plan for your life and it's with somebody if that's the desire of your heart so we're going to pray tonight that things start getting set in motion for you so that the wisdom of God comes to you so that you can prepare yourself for that mate. Because um, if you have that desire to get married, that didn't just come from you, that came from God. So we're going to pray tonight and uh, my wife and I are going to agree and that things start moving in your life in the right direction and not the wrong direction. So, Lord, we just thank you tonight that you just watch over everyone that watches this TV program. Lord, I pray that, that you would open their eyes and their ears to what you have for them, your plan for their life. <clears throat> I pray, Lord, that you would move things that are obstructing their, their uh, plan and that you would uh, bring in the right people to speak into their life. And that that mate that they so desire would walk across their path as they're ready and as they're willing to go. So, Father, we just trust you now that you would help them to understand exactly what we've said tonight. That they would incorporate that into their, into their life and that they would get themselves ready for their mate. So we plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that, that, that hears this prayer. And over everyone that desires to get a, a mate, we just plead the blood of Jesus over it right now. And we ask that you just open their eyes and their ears to the wisdom of God and that they hear your voice loud and clear. We ask you to do it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. We want to invite you to our Real Marriage Conference. Coming up November 2nd in Columbus, Ohio from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m., it's so awesome. You don't want to miss it. So put it on your calendar today and go to our website for more information.